Hey, hey, SDF kids, welcome back for another episode. You are not gonna believe what happens in our story today. It is going to blow your mind. But before we get to that, I was wondering, you guys wanna play a game? Yep, thought so. So I'm gonna turn off the lights in a second and I'm gonna do some different actions and you have to try and guess what it is I'm doing. Easy, right? Okay, I'll be right back, I'm gonna turn the lights off. All right, lights are off. You guys have to try to guess what I'm doing. Ready? Round one. Any guesses? Oh, you got it. I was doing the jumping jacks. Okay, ready for round two? Here we go. Oh, I heard it. Hula hooping. Okay. Let's try for round three. This one's a little bit more difficult. Here we go. You're singing it at home, right? It's the chicken dance. Well, that was fun. In our story today, we're gonna to hear about a time when Jesus' face shone like the sun and his clothes lit up. So hold on to your socks as we hear about how the disciples got to see Jesus' glory. Hey, kids, is, is that you? Can't really tell. You see, my eyesight's not what it used to be. And if you can't tell, I've been around a while. <laughs> my name is Miss Dictionary. So Jenna was telling me you guys needed to know what the word transfiguration means. So I want you to say it with me. Transfig. You ration. Lovely. You guys are so smart. Now, let me see. Transfiguration. Where do I find the letter T? Oh. Oh boy. A B C D 
E-F-G-H-I-J-K-L-M-N-O-P-Q-R-S-T. T. That's what I'm looking for. T. Now, transfiguration means it's when your appearance suddenly changes. <laughs> well, why don't I just show you? Let's, let's experience transfiguration. Ready? One, two, three. See what I mean? What I look like suddenly changed. If you didn't know, kids, now you know. Transfiguration. One day, Jesus led three of his disciples, Peter, James, and John, up on a high mountain to pray. The disciples fell fast asleep. As Jesus prayed, his appearance suddenly changed. His face was shining like the sun, and his clothes were as white as the light. The disciples woke up and saw Moses and Elijah talking with Jesus. Peter said, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you want, I will set up three tents here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While Peter was still speaking, a bright cloud suddenly covered them. A voice from the cloud said, This is my beloved son with who I am well pleased. Listen to him. The disciples heard this and fell face down. They were terrified. Jesus came up and touched them. Get up, he said. Don't be afraid. When the disciples looked up, they did not see Moses or Elijah anymore. They only saw Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus said to them, Don't tell anyone what you saw until the Son of Man is raised from the dead. The disciples did not tell anyone, but they wondered what Jesus meant. They asked him, Why do the scribes say that Elijah must come before the Messiah comes? Jesus explained that Elijah had already come. That is, a prophet like Elijah had come. The people did not recognize him as a prophet and they mistreated him. Jesus said, in the same way, the Son of Man is going to suffer at their hands. Then the disciples realized Jesus was talking about John the Baptist. Jesus showed his glory to Peter, James, and John. Jesus said he would die, rise from the dead, and return to heaven. One day, Jesus will come back to earth in his glory to make all things new. What an incredible experience for Peter, James, and John. Mark wrote that Jesus' clothing was whiter than any person could get them, no matter how much you washed them, and explained that Jesus' face shone like the sun. It would have been an incredible sight. Jesus' glory is bright and intense, but it's more than just a light. Jesus' glory is sort of like a combination of many different wonderful things about him. His glory is the intensity of his goodness. It's the depth of his love. It's the fullness of his holiness. It's the height of his fame. It's the length of his endlessness. It's also the majesty of his power. Jesus is the greatest treasure in the whole world. Hi there, I'm Pastor Brian, and it's time for questions from kids. Mackenzie from Bloomfield, New Mexico asks, What is God's glory? You know, Mackenzie, God's glory actually has kind of two different ideas to it. The first one is this. The Bible speaks of God's glory as His presence. Uh, it's often described as a, as a bright light, a brilliant light. I think of Moses back in the book of Exodus where he asks to see God's glory and, and God shows him just this bright light and so forth. And uh, Moses, when he comes off of, uh, of the mountain after getting the Ten Commandments, the Bible says his face shone brightly. Moses' face shone brightly because he was in the presence of God and it was God's glory being revealed through him. And so that's one aspect. But the greater aspect 
aspect is this. It's just basically who God is. Uh, God's glory is his character. It's how great he is. That's what glory means, just brilliance. That's why bright light is often used as the Bible to describe it because God, who he is, is so great, so brilliant. And so we think about God's characteristics, his attributes. We think about how loving he is, how gracious he is, how merciful, how just he is. And we think about these different attributes and who he is, how he acts, and it helps us understand who he is and we love him because of it. Here's the thing, when we encounter God's glory, the result should be that we should be in awe of God. We should be drawn to him and think, man, you are amazing, God. And then what we wanna do is we want to share God with others so that they can reach the same conclusion. That's what it means when we glorify God. We don't add anything to him, we simply share him with others so that they can join in in sitting or staying in awe of God and saying, man, God is fantastic, he's amazing. And we recognize God for who he is, our greatest treasure, our greatest joy. So really, God's glory is about that. It's about who he is, what he's done, and how amazing he is. So a question for you is this, how can we show others God's glory by how we live? All right, kids, we've got some black light fun for our memory verse today. I'm going to spin my dice, flip it over, whatever number's on the top is what we're gonna take off of here and it will tell us how we're gonna read our verse. Got it? All right, round number one. Number one. So number one right here says, we are going to read it with our eyes closed. Are you ready? Here we go. Close your eyes. One, two, three. If, we, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Romans 10, 9. All right, that one, done. If we get the same number, we're gonna keep rolling the dice, if you know what I mean. Round number two. Number three, which says, with your tongue out. All right, tongue out. Here we go. One, two, three. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Romans 10, 9. All right, not bad. Let's try another round. What number do you think we're gonna get? Guesses, guesses, guesses. Oh, another three. Let's try again. And another three. And again. And a number three. Five. We rolled a five. Last round, guys. Number five says whisper. So you have to get really quiet. Are you ready? One, two, three. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. You will be saved. Romans 10, 9. I couldn't really hear you, but that was the point. All right, that was a lot of fun. Hope you ha had a good time practicing that verse again. But right now, I need you to go get your Bible. You know the drill. We're going to open it up and we're going to read it together. Now that you've got your Bibles, let's open them up to Psalm 67. We're going to read the first two verses. It says, God, be merciful to us and bless us. Look on us with kindness so that the whole world may know your will. 
so that all nations may know your salvation. These words from Song 67 are like a prayer. We want God to have mercy on us and bless us. We can ask him to show kindness to us, not so that we can live an easy life, but so that everyone in the world can learn about him and know that he alone is the true miracle maker and he saves people from sin. So let's sing a song now called Waymaker.
Have you guys ever heard the saying, I'll just poke my head in and see what's going on? Well, right now, in front of your very eyes, I'm gonna poke my head through this hole. Think I can do it? Count down with me. Three, two, one. Poke! <laughs> totally got you. Pretty amazing, right? A little bit amazing? Okay, you're right. It's not even close to how amazing it must have been for Peter, James, and John to see how Jesus showed his glory. The story today tells us of the first time Jesus revealed his glory to humans, but it's not the last time. Did you know that? When Jesus returns to earth wearing bright white clothing and shining brighter than the sun, he's gonna destroy all evil and he's gonna fix everything wrong in our world. And everyone who has faith in Jesus will receive new glorified bodies to live forever with God in heaven. And there is nothing more amazing than that. Let's pray. Lord, help us glorify you. Give us wisdom to obey and courage to tell others about you. We know that we can only imagine how wonderful you are. Help us live in hope for the time when Jesus will return. Amen.